All right, peace and blessings, family. Welcome back to another edition of the STEM Files, the voice of STEM talent in Black culture. On tonight's episode, we build with Dr. Akili Muhammad and answer one of many questions being, should the Black and greater communities take the current COVID-19 vaccines? Tune in for more of this great segment after this. That's right. It's your brilliant engineer, Tariq Cardiac, back at it again. This is the STEM Files, where we highlight the best and brightest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Family, we are live every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. We are live via Facebook at the STEM Files. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube at the STEM Files and follow us on Instagram at the STEM Files as well. My name is Jabril Muhammad, a.k.a. Jabrillian Engineer. I am a civilian mechanical engineer focusing on naval ship fluid systems with a background in material science and engineering. Joined my, by my more illustrious co-host, Tariq Cardiac. What's going on, fam? <laughs> he said more illustrious. Well, yeah, you, you're illustrious. right about that. You're right about that. <laughs> well, the, only uh, name... <laughs> that? the only illustrious. <laughs> Praise me, Tola. <laughs> my name is uh, Tariq Muhammad, a.k.a. Tariq Cardiac. I'm a biomedical research scientist with a concentration and cardiovascular pathobiology, which is the study of how diseases form in the heart and blood vessels. I'm excited for tonight's show. I'm here with my mentor, one of my closest, uh, not only uh, confidants in, in the world of science and medicine, but also my one of my closest friends, Dr. Keely Muhammad Jabril. You want to take, take over? Oh, yeah, we want to tap right in. We want to get right to it. Listen, family, Doc, I feel like you know where I'm going. Within a week or so of each other, cleared for emergency use, the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, right out the box. Should the black community and really society for that matter, take either of these vaccines? If so, or if not, why? Yeah, so I think that's a wonderful question. First of all, I can get y'all, give y'all some shout out to the, that introduction was off the chain. Y'all gonna have to help me get mine together. So um, I can just <laughs> give y'all that shot first. <laughs> but um, you know, to Thank be you. honest with you, my brother, Yes, sir. Um, to be honest with you, I have to answer that question taking on the spirit of the minister who is okay. my mentor, right? My greatest mentor. Um, and, and I wanna I wanna put this in context. You know, when I, was, when I was coming up as a little boy, I used to look at my father and say things like, Man, he could whoop anybody behind. That's the best looking dude, he's the strongest, he got the biggest muscles. My dad right. was just it when I was coming up, you know what I'm saying? And right. And a lot of people, when they hear me talk, they say, oh, you, you, you are idol worshiper of the minister. No, I'm not. Oh, hey, I watched the minister during my period of time, the nation of Islam in an intimate fashion. Not that I can call him and he answers my call, but just studying him and listening to what people say that are intimately in his company. This man is walking in the scriptures. And so right. he is so kind and so merciful and so beneficent to people that sometimes have talked bad about him and put him down. And so that's why I say that I have to answer this in two separate ways. Will I take the vaccine? Will I suggest that anybody that I love, any of my family members, anybody that trusts me, would I say you should take the vaccine? Absolutely not. I'm 1000% against it because of many reasons, which I will get into. But the yes, other sir. aspect of talking about the vaccine is taking myself back a few years in my own medical journey. And I would say 20 yeah. years ago, I was a right. pro-vaccine person. I came to Houston and it. I wanted to vaccinate all the young black people, children in Houston that were unvaccinated. Houston was one of the worst, had one of the worst vaccine rates in the entire country when I came down here. So that was my mentality at that time. So if you take mm. me back 30 years or, or while I was in medical school or take was in college or take me back when I was a few years out of medical school, I probably would be pro vaccine. If I, if I was walking in those shoes right now, I probably would be telling people, yeah, you probably need to take this vaccine. So the point that I'm getting to is that I'm not going to call a lot of these black people out here suggesting. Well, let me not say all because some of them I am going to call sellouts, but the majority of them, like the sister right. that was part right. of producing the vaccine. I think her name is she right. she wants to be called Kizzy exactly know how to say her name, but she, the one that took the vaccine, a lot of these doctors right. that are out here promoting it, they don't mm. have my experience. They're not right. in my journey. 
they haven't been given my assignment. So I can't put these people down. But what I will say right. is if you trust me, Brother okay. Keeley, Brother Dr. Keeley's not going to come with emotions today. I'm coming with the science that I just finished sitting all day on the Moderna um, FDA um, discussion. And last week, I sat all day on the Pfizer conversation. There isn't right. science for me to tell anybody you should take this vaccine. There weren't enough black people in the study to say you should take this vaccine. Women haven't been studied correctly. Um, women that are in pregnancy age haven't been studied correctly. Older people haven't been studied correctly. The only thing that both of these studies can really say is that their vaccine seems to work in a two month basis for white people. Because mm. let me just get to the to the real meat. All right. So today, bring it out. Bring it Moderna, out. Right. Um, 88% of Moderna's trial participants were, were white. In the 56, and that, that we're talking from 18 to 55. In 56 to 7 year olds, it was 90% white. Greater than 71%, that's 90% white. So when you have numbers that high, the only science that you can come out and purport is this works in white people. And if we go back mm -hmm. last week to Pfizer, it was similar. It was 87% white in the younger patients. It was 100% white in the older population. So how can we say anything other than what the science is saying? And then I want right. to um, conclude that statement with this, my brother. If you all don't have this book, you haven't read it, it's kind of fat, but you need to get this book, Medical Apartheid by Harry wife just, my wife bought that several months ago. It's in, my, it's in our home. Yes, sir. So look, at, look, look at all my cards in there. Those are all yes, the sir. pages. Go ahead. And it's not all of them. That's just all the ones that I'm going to talk about on my show on Saturday. But those are all the pages where the NIH, the CDC, the FDA, the, the, um, the um, Health and Human Services, this government's extension, right? When you talk about all those organizations that I mentioned, that is the working aspect of this United States government. And they have right. been part of study after study after study after experiment after experiment after experiment, investigational things through black people. And we cannot afford in 2020 to give that type of suggestion that we should trust the FDA. That'll give a damn face they put on. Again, I'm giving a pass to the black people. Fauci and these other doctors that have been a part of this. And, and let me say this real quick before I forget. I did research last week. I haven't had a chance to finish it today. But last week I did research on all the people that were on this board. Right, The, the thing that I sat through today was a group of physicians and other medical professionals that were supposed to give their uh, rebuttal or approval of what they saw in the study of Moderna's vaccine. Last week, they were supposed to be doing the same thing with Pfizer. Almost every person that I researched was either a former employee or a current person that is getting paid by the FDA. What else do you think they're going to say? Come on. Somebody that mm -hmm. used to be your employee that you probably still have a good tie with or somebody that you have an association with and you're probably paying. What right. else is that person going to say? Right. So we see, were as just I continue to do I can continue to, to find information. We, we are being played. This is a big old game. And then I hope today we also get into the $250 million um, that has been given to the HBCUs around the country. Why all of a sudden right. now? Why in right. 2020, when black schools have been talking about the injustices, the inequality, and the lack of funding since I went to school in the 80s, and now all of a sudden they're going to give millions of dollars to black schools? Are we really awake? Can we really decipher through this? So no, brothers and sisters, I wouldn't suggest anybody take the vaccine. But at the right. end of the day, you have to make a decision for yourself. And you know what? Jabril and I were just talking about the benefits of certain scientists and certain institutions promoting the development and the distribution of vaccines. And one of the things, and as a matter of fact, the school I went to, Virginia State University, just received $30 million for, I, I, I can't recall what it was for, but it, it was a little random considering what we're going through. And I, I want to talk more about how scientists and how certain institutions benefit from these vaccines and why some of them are so, are so against it, not so much because of the science of the vaccine, but because of, of what it's doing for their careers in terms of financial support. 
You shed well, some light on you that? Know, that? That's that's why I said earlier that I. Yes, sir. I mean, I I can believe deserve a pass, but I'm not the judge of that. You know, um, they said on their own white website. If if you no, know, if everybody hasn't had a chance, go to Black Doctors Against COVID and check out their website. Look around, do a little investigation, and see what conclusion you come to. Well, when I go to the FDA and go through the program like I did today, there's a clause in the FDA document that mentions a particular doctor's name and says that he was offered um, compensation. So that's proof to me that potentially it's money that's making some of these people make their decision. So if you decide that after all these years that black schools have been struggling, that now you want to get this $40, $40 million, $50 million, uh, I think Morehouse has gotten $80 million altogether. You're going to take this mm -hmm. money and then try to influence all these young black people to take this shot or to be part of a, a, a phase two or phase three or even a phase four trial. To me, that is either ignorance and we'll have to give you a pass or you're doing it to validate yourself with white folks or to fill your pockets with the bag or you want to be more prestigious and have your name more popular. Maybe you want a position in the FDA or a CDC or the NIH because that's what you aspire to. Or maybe you want to be on the president's team. I don't know what it mm, is, but if mm. you're going to sell your people out for those type of things that you know better, then you got something coming. But if you're doing it out of ignorance, I pray that you have grace and mercy by the God that we serve like I did. I know for a fact that I sit in front of you brothers and anybody that's listening, and I can say that one of my torments inside is that I know for years I injected these type of vaccines in young black children. I Wow. I did it myself. I instructed my nurses to do it. So I always wonder, is there some young black child out here with autism? Is there a young right. person out here with a lot of problems because of what I did? I have to live right. with that. But I did it out of ignorance. I was right. fooled into this. So at the end of the day, I have to give a little grace to other black people, other black scientists that may be in the same condition that I was in. But if you know right. better and you're acting like this, you know, I can't say what I really want to say because, you know, I do too much cursing. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Family, we are tapped in here at the STEM Files. If you aren't liking, commenting, giving questions and sharing, I don't know what you're doing. Again, we are live on Facebook at the STEM Files, also on YouTube at the STEM Files. Make sure to follow us for future content at the STEM Files on IG. You know, I love you. You gave us facts. You gave us numbers. You gave us your own journey. You also talked about giving grace to those who may, be, who may feel that they're doing what they know to be right from their experience, right? You know, one thing that I think is a, is a misconception, or I'll just leave it out as a question. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan in a recent address to um, the Black community and greater community at the, uh, this le the leadership summit, he was at, I'm forgetting the full name, you know, he talked about the vaccine and the need for alternatives. Is the nation of Islam anti-vaccine? I'm going to say it one more time. Is the nation of Islam anti-vaccine? If so, explain. If not, can you give greater guidance and unpack, you know, the, the, the true, uh, what, what we truly are? Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's one of the greatest questions I've been asked, my brother, because I would disagree that we are anti-vaccine. Right. We are saying no to a vaccine would be no different than when I look at my young brothers out in the streets and they're killing each other. I'm not anti-gun. I'm anti y'all killing each other. Right, right, right. You know, there, there is a place for guns. We have been taught in the nation of Islam that there's going to come a time where we're going to have guns. When we get our own in, you think you're going to come in our community and do what you've done to us? You think we're going right. to allow that to happen? No. We'll put you down in a heartbeat. But my point right. is that the ideology of vaccination makes sense. And right, the way that right. the first black person that did it in this country did it, it made absolute sense. During the smallpox outbreak, during slavery, a black man, I'm forgetting his name right now, but a black man took a swab, took a, some of the pus from the cow, put a small slit in the, in the slave skin and put a little bit of that pus in all the different slaves. Now, at first, the slave master didn't even trust him. 
But after a few days, when all the rest of the slave um, mansions were allowed, were having all of their slaves die, this man and his slaves didn't die on the plantation where the brother put the pus in them. And so that was right. the first example of vaccination in this country that I right. know of. So that perspective of taking an infection to keep people from getting infected and maybe dying from this, that is a pretty astute ideology. The problem right. is whose hands is it in? As I just mm. finished saying, anybody that doesn't have this book, you are not equipped to make a decision. Anybody that hasn't read this book, you're not equipped to make a decision on whether you should or should not take the vaccine. That's just, I'm just trying to tell you that if you think there's anything positive about the CDC, if you think there's anything positive about the NIH, the FDA, or any of these other organizations that are so-called looking out for our health, you have to do your research to see that they never have been. They have made plenty of money and they have gotten plenty of prestige and they've made a lot of discoveries and then they take all those black people slaves just what they consider trash that are in the waste buckets and in the mud and they take all the things that they learn and use it on the white people that has been the history of medicine in this country and you can't walk into 2020 what we have going on and say oh you know what dr fauci's a wonderful guy based on what oh bill and melinda gates have given all this money Bezos' oh, wife, ex, ex-wife, has given four something billion dollars and a lot of gone to black people. So the hell what? All right. of these things that I'm talking about right now, the studies and the experimentation that's gone on with black people from north to south, east to west in this country, since we have land on this country, have been through the, the beautiful and nice words of white people, like Margaret Sanger, yeah. like the Rockefeller yeah. Foundation, like the Carnegie Foundation. So you just take that historical information, implant it to 2020, and you're talking about the Bill and Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bezos' wife, mm. ex-wife, and all these other people that are so-called put together. Like I think it's somewhere around, like um, somewhere around five to six billion dollars have been given to black institutions and black schools within the last year. When have you ever heard of anything like that? When have white people ever? got behind black institutions and tried to promote black improvement, black education, black improvement from any perspective, educational, med medical, financial, housing, land right. ownership. They've never done that in the history mm. of this country. But all of a sudden now, in 2020, when we're trying to suggest black people be the ones to go out here and do that so you all can live, man, we got to be crazy to not be able to see through that reality. But unfortunately, if you don't not able to see through that reality, that's what's important about a show like this. That's what's important about a show like mine. That's what's important about reading a book by Dr. Wesley. That's important about watching NOI.org on Sundays so that you can get something that will spark you. Not to say, oh, I'm going to leave whatever I'm doing and go follow these people 100%, but start doing your research. Start reading. Start getting some of the suggestions and grab the books start doing your own reading and then see what your conclusion is. If you conclude different, right. praise be to Allah, may Allah bless you. But if you agree, that's right. that's we right. have to coalesce this agreement and build this unity to say, no, we're not taking this. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, thank you so much. Uh, a quick shout out, Sister Donna Muhammad. Just want to make sure you see uh, we have a ticker going on at the bottom of the screen and for our cash app, it's going to be cash tag, the STEM files, cash tag, the STEM files, T-H-E-S-T-E-M-F-I-L-E-S. -E -E Thank you so much for your inquiry. Khalil and Joaquin, hit the like. Yes, hit the like, family. Continue to drop questions. Continue to drop questions. You know, um, I'm glad that we started the way we did, and I want to move into the immunotherapy or immunity building aspect of what it is that we can do. You know, we, we know that you pride yourself on putting the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in the form of how to eat to live at the forefront of your practice. Um, at the, I have the name of the summit up because I, I want to make sure we um, spit actual facts. Give me a second. And I lost it. Ah, give me a second. Take your time, bro. I had it. I, I want to make sure I say the right name. You talking about the one that the minister was, at, was on the other day? He was just at, he was just at, yep, I got it. I got it. Yep. Okay, at the National Black Leadership Summit, December 12th. 
the Honorable Mr. Farrakhan spoke about the importance of vitamin D as pertains to building one's immune system against this, uh, this virus, SARS-CoV-2, leading to COVID-19 specifically. Was his statement valid? And if so, why? <laughs> what, is the, what is the benefits of vitamin D as it pertains to defense for this virus? Yes, sir. Well, let me first say, absolutely, his statement is what? valid because his statement absolutely. is superior. And I, I, right. know, I know what you meant, but I, right. I want yes, to make sure yes, anybody sir. that's listening that may not be a I want to be in no meeting somewhere like, you question the minister. <laughs> I just, you know, for, the, for the people who don't believe, right? Exactly. No, no, no. I, I know that's not what you're doing, bro. I, I know that's right. facts. You, you know it better than that. But right. my point is that there are a lot of people out here that think that um, is this island over here of black people that don't have love and aren't talking to the rest of our black population. And that would be 1000% right. true. The honest truth is that every time I come on a show like this, I try to aim my idea, aim my conversation towards those who are not members of the nation of Islam, because I have a certain right. expectation of a member of the nation of Islam that should be studying. You should already read or right. have read the books or should be reading the books that I'm suggesting because those are the books right. that we should be reading to stay up. So we can see through all the madness that's going on. When you have read the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings, when you've listened to the minister for years, you are able to traverse all of this madness that's going on and just point out stuff like, yeah, here's what they about to do. Oh, here's about what's about to happen. And I've been saying this all year long. And I don't think people can go back and listen to me in January or February and say that anything that I have said has either been made untrue or hasn't proved to be facts. I'm not right, taking right. that credit. I give that credit right. to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I wanted to okay. start with that. But is what he said actual facts? Absolutely, 1,000%. And I recently read an article. I might even have a word. I'll try to pull it up before we get off. But I, I read an article on this, this these um, scientists that were doing studies on the benefits of body. And that's why I was so amazed when the minister said it, but he took it to a whole nother level. He said billions of vitamins. And these right. people were talking about the benefits of sun outside of vitamin D. It's amazing. Right. I'll have to um you know maybe come back and drop the um article links in the in your discussion. But brothers and sisters this book right in my 25 years of practicing medicine is incomparable. Unconquerable, okay. should I say is the right word. It's in it's in take anything out of this book and apply it to your life correctly and not see the benefits. And that's why, as brother said, it is the foundation of what I do. Because the stuff right. that I learned in medical school, the stuff that I learned walking behind my mentors, the things that I learned from the medical institution, it didn't serve me the same way that how to eat to live does. And so when yeah. the honorable Elijah talked about living, potentially living a thousand years. Come but on. he also tells us that if you eat one a day and you fast right. two or three days per month at the right. end of the year, you won't have enough sickness in your body to make you sick one hour. Mm -hmm. He didn't leave it at that. He said, if you eat one meal every 48 hours, one meal every two days, you won't be sick, but every four or five years, how many mm -hmm. of us on this program today can say we know somebody that hasn't been sick for four to five years and he still didn't leave it at that he said if you eat one meal every three days or one meal every 72 hours you will never be sick and you potentially could live to a thousand years ain't nobody else even coming close to giving you those type of guarantees and i right. just want to put this caveat on it. he didn't say this in his book but my understanding and my recollection my conclusion is that all those statements that he made are talking about a beautiful, a well potential, as well as a well, uh, a, a great ability of your immune system to keep you healthy. So we can mm. keep ourselves from getting sick from viruses, from fungi, from bacteria. But we also have to understand that the immune system is part of maintaining this body. So when you go out and you do a, a nice hard workout and you soar the next day, you did some damage to your muscles. How does the muscle right. repair? Immune system. Right. If you right. do something real strenuous and you affect, affect your heart in the same way, you got to repair it. If you eat some bad food and you go cause some damage in your GI system, you got to repair it. If you go out in, in, in a community and you're smelling odors and you're getting around smog or industrialized smog that causes damage to your lung, you have to repair that. That's the immune system. 
And so if he tells us that we could be sick only one hour a year or not be sick every five years or not be sick at all, he's giving you the blueprint to the best immune system that you could potentially have. And you cannot have that without the sun, as the minister told us. Mm. Great question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Oh, man. As I turn it over to my big bro, Tariq, it's funny you mentioned working out. And our co-hosts keep ducking me in these workouts. So I gotta no, get, I gotta no, get no. on it. Keep I'm ducking working, me on bro, these workouts. I'll be at work. <laughs> okay, we be at work. Yes, sir. Yes, we know it's the other day before a lot. You know, but no, you're but, right, you're right. To, to, to your point, Dr. Achilles, you know, people may say, oh, well, who's the honorable Elijah Muhammad to be given medical and nutritional advice? First off, the yes. book doesn't say from the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm, that's right. Say that it again. says from God in say person. That again. Now you got it. Yes. That's right. Now you got to wrestle with that on your own. You take that or leave it. The book right. says from God in person. So my thing right. is every doctor and whatever it is that they say is a byproduct of the study of an incomplete science. The minister said right. how this world's knowledge, whether you study, it was, I forget what um, interview or lecture was. He was talking about if, you, if it's Dewey, if you study Aristotle, everybody has studied the creation and came up with their perception and put it in a book. So, That's right. you know, I haven't been to medical school. I'm an engineer. It's the same thing there. We, in chemistry, we start with the Bohr model, which they tell us is wrong. And then, yes. then we go through what the current model <laughs> yes. of the atom is, which is still incomplete, right? So right. Absolutely. the book says from God in person. So that he put the master's um, name out there in the universe for us to uh, to take from. So just wanted to make sure that I, I said that, how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad never came saying things of himself, but always gave credit where credit is due. That's and right. with that, I want to turn it over to um, Brother Tariq. Keep us going. Man, you know, I want to just want to first to say, uh, once again, we are <laughs> live at the STEM Files on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And again, follow us on Instagram at The STEM Files. Don't forget to hit the like button, share, comment, and make sure that you uh, support The STEM Files on a weekly basis, Thursdays and Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, one of my questions um, is in regards to education. You know, and Jabril, I'm gonna touch on this question because I know you were gonna ask it, but I know you kind of, you got you got to head out on a few. But we talked about, there's a lot of words going around mRNA, vaccine, va uh, diff uh, different types of ad adenovirus, you know, stuff that's just floating around. Mm -hmm. How important is it and why do we yes. need to educate ourselves on biological substances and how they work? Why is it important to understand those things? Because we, we will, you know, somebody said, oh, no, here, this, this is just some uh, mRNA. Go ahead and take that. But if, if I'm not educated enough on the topic, why would I even be able to be against it or for it. So talk about how important it is to be educated on these different types of termino this, this terminology and how these things work. Yeah, that's an excellent question, brother, because I think it's important for us to have that conversation as well as, a, as, well as we should keep our mouths closed when we don't know, because yes. you potentially right. could put somebody's right. life in danger by thinking you know something because you watched a YouTube video or because oh you heard God. something but you don't have any idea how to put it down, right? So um, yes, I'll use an example like this. Uh, let's take um, an analogy and say that my wife is cheating on me and whooping my behind, right? And she's been mm -hmm. doing it the whole 10 years we've been married. And I say, you know what? I'm not doing this in 2021. You either going to change or I'm going to leave. And so she sits there and she gives me this whole spill. Oh, baby, I love you. I'm not going to do it no more. So I have to put my hands on, you know, I lose control. I got a bad temper and I'm not going to cheat. I don't want no other man. I just want you. After 10 years, I'm going to believe what the hell you just finished telling me. Probably not. Come on. At right. the end of the day, we're either going to have to sit down and look at some information of somebody that has gone through what we've gone through that can help us get out of this, or I got to cancel you and move on. And so I'm saying that because some of you have gone on social media. Some of you have had people send things to you and people are out here to destroy things and do this and this and that. The mRNA is going to cause you to be a different aspect of yourself. It's going to turn you into a different person. It's going to change your genetic code. You know, be honest with you. I haven't spoken on any of that 
because I don't have any information to be able to prove that. But that's the important of the yeah. unity that I'm talking about. See, I am a person that interacts with people. I've never really been big into being in the lab, even though I did enjoy some aspects of it. But that's why we, like brothers like us, and connecting with other scientists who specifically do those type of things where they can come and explain, or I can explain RNA, I can explain messenger RNA, but I can't explain it as well as a biomedical scientist. Just like a biomedical mm -hmm. scientist can't explain how the body works and how it reacts to medications like I do. That's my, or how it reacts to food is what I should say more, more specific. But when you're looking at the reality of a cell, as you know, Brother Tariq, we can study a cell for the next 10 years mm -hmm. and not exhaust all the different things that are going on in that cell because it's that right. intricate. Exactly. And so I, I, think, I think it's imperative for brothers and sisters to understand that you have to do some study and you have to be able to decipher what information is coming in to you. But don't ever believe that you can sit and listen to Brother Keeley talk after being in this field as long as I've been and then read how to eat to live and you're gonna to come to the same conclusion I came to. It's not possible. I can't come to the same conclusion as brother Tariq taking vaccines. I have studied vaccines. I've studied a lot of information about vaccine ingredients and what the ingredients do to people. But being in a lab and producing a vaccine, this brother, brother Victor, brother Jabril, and I'm not talking about just you, brother. I'm talking about another I'm brother. No, sir. Know. I know he's These talking about that. <laughs> in a lab and have been part of producing. Yes, sir. They have produced vaccines. So I have yes, to sir. speak what I know. I have to speak what my research tells me. I have to speak to realities, putting them together. And I can sometimes predict things. But speaking out of what my knowledge base is, is what I try not to do. I try to associate myself with brothers that I know, that I know are going to speak to the facts like i'm going to speak to the facts and when we get that information together you should be able to see that we know what we're talking about because this let's just be honest brother Tariq and brother jabril and i the three of us have had a relationship for a while i think i trust them and i believe they trust me if we were going to say something and say something wrong in this type of an audience very serious information and I believe that every time I speak, it's serious enough where if I make a mistake, it's got to be corrected because we can't allow right. people, especially in 2020, trying to make a decision that could take your life in one direction or another is too serious a time to be out here running your mouth. But you haven't put in the work. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yes, Did sir. I answer your question? Sure. Yes, sir. Absolutely. More than answered. You, yes, more sir. than answered. Right. Right. You know, and, th and that goes brings me back to um, my next question in terms of, you know, the relationship between the medical doctor and the laboratory scientist. So let me let me put it to you like this. You can have 16 molecular biologists in a room and only one of them will want to help you with the coronavirus. Same thing with doctors. So talk about how important yes. it is for the medical doctor and the laboratory scientist to have a relationship. So that whatever the, the laboratory scientists produce, produces in a lab, or whatever the medical doctor is able to uh, produce in a clinical setting with his patients, they can merge the two and have a successful uh, elimination of a disease. Talk about that relationship. That's beautiful, bro. Um, you know, I, I think what I would like to um, say to that is... Um, I would have to go back and touch back on what I said earlier. And that is, you know, that, that depends where the person is, right? Because even when I believe I was in my most vulnerable aspects of practicing medicine, I still was a person that asked a lot of questions. I tried to decipher and try to figure as many things out as I could. And so having me, brother, Dr. Keeley, having a relationship with a brother, Victor, a brother, Tariq, and a brother, Jabril, and I can go to them and I can say, hey, you know, I was thinking about such, 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 such. What do you think? based on your experience in that. And then we touch base with each other's thought processes. And sometimes it takes it to a whole nother level. And then sometimes you got to kill it because man, your thought was crazy, bro. That don't even make sense. Okay, well, mm -hmm. let me put that back inside. Maybe there'll be something in the future. But, but the right. reality is that if I take my 
to medical school. I think the, the general doctor coming out of medical school is so arrogant, they don't think they need anybody else. But when Come you just sit back and you observe them, you can see that you listen to these drug reps. You didn't question the drug rep. You didn't take mm -hmm. out that sheet and read that sheet before you started giving these, these samples to your patients. You don't question what these people say when you go to these CME, these continuing medical education classes. You sit there and you listen to these people and you go back to your practice and you start doing what they told you to do without question. And so sometimes our doctors out here are so enrolled, they're so busy, they're so inundated with the fastness of the medical industry that they're not stopping to think. They're not slowing down to evaluate things. So they're just taking whatever is said. They don't care about going to a lab and building a relationship so you can ask questions and you can take your, your discipleship as a physician and you have a care of people's lives in your being, that's mm. the way we have to look at it. Like, man, when this person walks in my office and they say, uh, Dr. Keeley, I'm going to trust you with these things that I don't necessarily know how to figure out or these things that I know are going wrong or I don't feel like I'm going to live. I'm trusting you. If you have that type of ideology, then you have to have an association with people because every time I go to make a decision, every time I go to make a uh, uh, an idea or I give you a suggestion, I have to make sure that I've checked that. I have to make sure that I know what I'm giving you is right. Or I have to tell you, you know what? We're going to have to do an experiment. We're going to have to do, um, you know, we're going to have to try some things, but I don't necessarily know. We got to be honest. You know what I mean? And right, when it comes to this vaccine, that's not happening. This, these FDA people, these doctors out here, they're saying it's safe. And the study so far said, well, they got two months of information. You can't tell anybody that this vaccine is going to be safe in June of next year or by the end of the next year. So we really have a lot of information, a lot of black people that are out here promoting this thing and they haven't done their diligence or, as I said before, they're being influenced in another way. And that's um, damn near criminal. Mm. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we have a, a comment in the, uh, from Dr. Gladys Delancey Bolden. She's a molecular biologist. She was on our show a few months ago. Thank you so much, Dr. Bolden. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm gonna put a comment up on the screen. Can everybody see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so what are your thoughts on individuals with genetic conditions that cause individuals to be, to be immunocompromised? Do you believe in CRISPR case and iron being used as a treatment for genetic abnormalities? And I can help you um, uh, with that question if you need it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand it. Um, I would say this, sister, gotcha. um, you know, it, it's how to eat to live that 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 made me make my transition. It wasn't anything else. There's no money. It wasn't like I got hit in the head by a brick. I didn't have an accident, was in the <laughs> hospital for 10 days and then woke up out of a coma. <laughs> I, <Right. laughs> I left my practice one day and I was fed up. This is not what I desired when I was a little boy. This is not why I worked so hard in medical school. That was about six or seven years into practicing. And I said, I want to stop doing this. All of my friends in the Houston area were making money in the housing market. I was like, I'm going to take the money I got. I'm going to go start flipping these homes and make this bread like everybody else is doing and go enjoy my life to hell with medicine at this point. And I walked home in, in my house that night. And, and, and honestly, it looked like how do you to live was so much bigger than it had ever looked like before. And so, I, I mean, I literally, it was sitting in my in my bookcase right by my door. I had one of those apartments where I had the little bookcase. You know, like you walk in and you have a little slant, little bookcase right, and you right. walk into the, into the uh, kitchen, right? And these two books looked like they were all up in my face, right? And so I sat down <laughs> and I started reading it. And in book one, in the first 30 pages, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that you can heal chronic conditions in sometimes months or years. It's like, God, man, what is he talking about? A few mm. pages later, you can solve diabetes without medication. Oh, he can't know what he's talking about. There ain't no way this dude that didn't even finish the fourth grade can teach me as many years as I've been in school went on a little further. <laughs> Fasting cures 90% right. of our ills. And I was like, oh, man, this dude tripping. And then I kind of sat back for a minute. I put the book down and I was like, why, 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 how come none of my mentors ever said anything like this? How come I've never heard any doctor that, that I look to for influence ever say anything like this until that point. Cause I haven't even at that point, I hadn't even heard anything from Dr. Ali. So the point mm. is that I went out to try to prove him wrong. 
And I started seeing people come off of cholesterol medicine in two or three months. Started seeing people come off of high blood pressure medicine in one, two or three months. Started seeing yeah. people come off of diabetes medicine in two or three or four months. And then people were coming to me and telling me that their multiple sclerosis was better and their liver enzymes were better for hepatitis C and their HIV counts were increasing. And I was like, damn, man, this dude does know something. So it was that type of stuff that started make, making me reassess what does this book mean when it says from God in person? You know what I mean? Because I'm hearing these dudes talk about God as a man. And I'm like, man, I don't know what the hell they talking about. So it all started to come together. And so to me, that's God's intervention. God took me out of that system and placed me and put me in a different direction. And after I started to see the benefits of that, then you can't put a box back on this brain. You can't put a box back in this being. I broke out of that box and I never will get back into any type of shape. I got to keep moving out here whenever an idea, I got to address it. If I run into a difficult situation, I got to try to solve it. And so specifically to your question, sister, I don't believe that the perfect God that we serve makes mistakes in these bodies. I believe that when a child comes out of mother's womb, and that child has a so-called genetic disorder or a cancer or something else that's causing them some type of a problems, I believe that's due to that mother's inability to take care of herself correctly. There's so many checks and balances in this body. So that's the first statement that I wanna say. Secondly, do I believe that these type of therapies can cause immuno, what they call an immuno um, autoimmune disorder? Yes, but I don't consider an autoimmune disorder the same thing that the general medical industry considers an autoimmune disorder. Because what we are saying is that the body got confused and started attacking itself. That's not what's happening from my vantage point. My vantage point is that our systems are so perfect. They try to always do right. And when we do not treat this body correctly for many, many years, there's a lot of things deposited in the body, in the fat, in the tissues, in the organs. And when the body gets to a point where it says, you know what, I got to try to stop us from going down this road of death, it starts attacking the, the chemicals, starts attacking the additives, the preservatives, all the things that are in our heavy metals, all the things that are in our body that's not supposed to be there. And so because there's some collateral damage, we call it autoimmune disorder. No, it's a perfectly made immune system that's trying to do its job. Why can I say that so confidently? Because over the last... 17 years that How to Eat to Live has been the foundation of what I do. I've watched many people walk up out of autoimmune disorders. So if it was an autoimmune disorder, why did their body stop attacking itself? Because mm. we detoxified them. So um, let me know if I answered your question, sister. Yes, uh, Dr. Dr. Bowling, please drop in the comment section. Yes, that's, that's an excellent question. You know, because CRISPR, can you, matter of fact, can you go into a little bit more what CRISPR is? You know, before we move on to the next topic, because I, I believe CRISPR uh, well, was um, part of that. Yes, sir. She did. She question. did mention yes. CRISPR. Um, I believe mm -hmm. CRISPR is a a um, a technique that they use in order to manipulate DNA and RNA to be able to splice it and put caps on yeah. it so that they can kind of move it around and do kind of things what they want to. I don't honestly know what CRISPR stands for. I've read it before, but I can't remember it right now. But at the end of the day. Uh, most of us that are paying somewhat of attention, we know that they so-called mapped the whole genome. There are some questions whether they really did or they didn't. There are questions whether that is a that's reality or not. But at the end of the day, when we talk about DNA material. We're talking about the information that makes us who we are. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself. When you look at your baby that was just produced, the DNA material is what put the blueprint out there for that baby or you to be produced. And so what scientists are doing now, another thing that we have to highly question whether it's safe, is they're going and they're taking out certain aspects of genes and splicing it with other genes and so-called making people be able to avoid certain diseases. Um, anytime you try to interfere in a perfect system that God put together, there's going to be consequences and repercussions. That's right. That's right. And what people don't understand, too, is that when it comes to genetics, and you know, we talked about this a lot on a few episodes back with um, with uh, Sabria. She's a, a Georgia uh, biology student at Georgia, Georgia Georgia State University. 
you know, we talked about yes, sir. the use of nutrition to alter genes that are considered bad or the genes that predispose yes. us to certain conditions. Yes. And, you know, being that, you know, our genes are just a reflection of what we're doing and a reflection of what somebody mm -hmm. did that came before us. It's only imperative and only right that we use nutrition and things like nutrition or some or close enough to it to use that to help us stay away from so-called genetic uh, predisposition. So I just wanted to add that in there. Um, so my next yeah, question if I may is, add this too, brother. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so um, a couple of a couple of I think about a month ago, I was on a sister show. <clears throat> And she made a comment about coming from a small country town and she came to a city, I think, to go to college and she wound up, you know, getting interacting with the nation of Islam. And somebody gave her some organic um, garlic. She ate the garlic for the first time. I think she said she had, had like sprinkled garlic, powdered garlic, whatever. But that was the first time she had like literal piece of garlic and ate it. And she said she had a tingling sensation over her skin, over her almost her whole body within a very short period of time. See, when I mention something like that, a lot of us go to, oh, was she allergic? No, that was the medic medicinal properties of that garlic. And if we really just slow down for a minute and just put things in context, why would God bless us with life? Why would he put all these beautiful systems together? A sperm that you don't tell what to do, and an egg that a woman doesn't even know was impregnated and this baby is growing in you and you even know it yet, all that can happen, but yet he didn't put the right food out here to be the every single solitary aspect of your body that needs nutrition. He didn't put something out here to handle that. You can't get right, that in right. a GNC. You can't get that with a doctor's prescription. You can't get that in a, in a bottle, in a supplement. Until you come to the conclusion that food, that needs to be your medicine and medicine be your food, which this book is to you, then you will always be in second place. That's just my understanding after my travels. I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm just telling you where I am. It doesn't mean that sometimes in my experience with people, I don't, I do put people on supplements sometimes. It depends on how, how, what state they are in when they come to me. But this brother that you're listening to today I rely on my food 1,000%. I don't take vitamins. I don't take supplements other than the immune boosting supplements since, you know, some things happened in my life uh, a few months ago where I had to do that. But outside of that, I rely on the food and the teachings of Ron Wadra Muhammad how to live to give me health and longevity. And I don't think you can get superior than that. No, sir, you, can, you can't. Excellent, excellent. So my next question uh, comes from something that we've been talking about for the last well, five months now since the Criterion, the minister's lecture on July 4th. He talked about the different types of therapies that are currently being used to treat uh, COVID-19. And I'm not, I'm not saying used to treat the coronavirus, I'm saying used to treat COVID-19 because COVID-19 and the coronavirus are, are to be used in a different context. So that's right. Talk a, talk a little bit about uh, those therapies or the therapies that you know of and talk about what they've been able to do for the, the populations that they've been used for compared to how the United States has been treating those uh, with COVID-19. Yes, sir. It's amazing. Um, I was actually having a conversation with somebody about that early, earlier today about, um, I think it was Madagascar. I did a little research on what they've been doing. Cuba, yeah. of course, Turkey. And even China were, were doing some uh, what I would consider more holistic ideologies when it comes to this um, COVID outbreak versus what the United States is doing. Um, so let me just kind of say that I don't know if some of you have seen this video of this man that was sitting in front of, I think it was the Senate or Congress talking about ivermectin, which is a medication that we use for parasite infection. I have right, never heard right. of it before anything other than parasite infections, but he is saying that he and his other doctors have plenty information and plenty proof that this thing works. The other medications that they're using are all experimental in this country. We're talking about the eye camp therapy and I, and 
I, and for those of you that are not scientists, you need to worry about this. Just listen to the words so that you can be somewhat educated, but it's not necessary to go into the deep science of these things. But I came as a therapy being touted out of Florida. They got people taking some of these experimental drugs, these um, monoclonal antibody drugs. These are all just as new. These are all just as experimental as these vaccines. And so if you aren't practicing prevention, you might wind up in a hospital and you're not going to have the ability to tell them what to do or what not to do. If you're struggling to breathe, if you're struggling to live, you want to get help. And if you go to the hospital, they're going to do what their protocols are. So it's not it's not one of those type of things where you have to know a lot, but you do have to know some things because you don't want to walk into these centers um, if you wind up getting this completely ignorant. So that's the first thing. Now, the other aspect that I want to talk about are like those other countries. And somebody mentioned um, last night I was on a program of Africa when this coronavirus first was becoming a pandemic. They they predicted that it was going to decimate the motherland. And it hasn't. They predicted it was going to decimate the islands, and it hasn't. They predicted it was going to decimate a lot of places in South America, and it hasn't. It seems to be doing most of its damage in Europe and the United States. But what I have noticed in a lot of these countries is they are going back to some of the basic things. And like some of you may have heard me say before, if we go back to nature, if we go back to what grandma used to do, if we go back to what the old people used to talk about and how used to do, those things seem to be working better than all of this new experimental investigational stuff that they're trying to push on right. the people. And we have no idea what it's really going to cause until it's out there for a few years. So these people talking about being outside and increasing your vitamin D and being around the aromatherapy and taking vitamin C and eating some of the natural foods and making sure that your elimination is good. And then outside of those practices, one thing that I think is is definitely very popular in many places around the world are interferon substances. That's when right. the United States looks at other countries, the United States base, bases what they're going to accept and what they're not going to accept on political reasons, not what's best for you. It's all about politics and money because they have rejected the beneficial things that Cuba has been doing all over the world. There is not mm -hmm. a country on earth that has done a better job after hurricanes, after typhoons, That's after right. uh, tornadoes, after anything, all these uh, weather-related catastrophes around the world. Cuba has led the world in going to these places, having a very sane way to evaluate and keep the people healthy. But yet, because the United States doesn't want to give them any credit, and doesn't want to decrease this embargo, they won't even accept the information. A lot of the things that the Cubans are doing, they're spreading around the world. I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, be surprised if they're the ones that are promoting a lot of these other countries to do what they do. But at the end of the day, interferon is an excellent, excellent, um, it's an excellent supplement for us to consider because right now the Big Pharma can't find a way to make money. And sometimes we have to come to those conclusions that what Big Pharma wants to do is usually the opposite of what's best for us. That's right. Did I answer your question, Absolutely. bro? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> you, you always do, bro. You, you don't never have to ask me that. <laughs> hey, yes. All right. Um, well, you know, we're coming up on uh, 54 minutes uh, of the show. And I wanted to just first and foremost thank you for your time. I know it's kind of last minute me asking you be, to be on the show. Um, you know, I think this is your third time being on the show, once on Blog Talk and twice in the YouTube setting. So, you know, that that's a, mile, a milestone yes, for sir. us and our relationship for how we've been working together. Right. You know, yes, sir. What, yes, what, sir. Is, what are some of the things that you personally or professionally recommend that you've used to um, treat patients that are experiencing some symptoms um, of COVID-19 or to prevent COVID-19 from uh, attacking them, to, to prevent the coronavirus from attacking them again? Well, you know where I'm going first, bro, right to the book, right to the foundation. And that is, you know, right. if, you, if you're a believer and you are a member of the nation, it, uh, 
Islam, get the book and start reading it. If you are not a member of the Asian Nation of Islam, get the book and start reading it and put it to test. Start trying to see if making the adjustments that he suggests, what it will do for you. What will it do for your energy? What will it do for the, the, the content of your countenance, meaning your skin? What will it do for your endurance? What will it do for your mental acuity? Put these things to test because when I did that, I and the people that trust me in great benefits. When I sit down and talk with people, I do the same thing that Brother Jabril talked about earlier, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad never gave to himself. Everywhere in this book, he keeps saying, from God in person taught me this. From God in person, he told me such and such. And so Brother Dr. Keeley is going to keep saying the same thing. How to eat to live is what made this brother be able to sit in front of you and say the things that I say. It didn't come from medical school. It didn't come from the regular medical books. It came from how to eat to live and other things that I've read, other things that I've learned, other things that I've studied. And then the interaction with people and they trusting me and we experimenting. And when I say experiment, I'm not talking about something that can I'm talking about something that can you know, good. And we just have to figure out how good, how fast, how long will it take? And so mm. in this time we're living in, it would be much more effective for us to cut on prevention than treatment. And so you gotta do your vitamin C rich foods. You gotta do your vitamin D rich foods. You gotta get out and get sunshine. And for those of you who live in cold regions, still get out there and try to get some as much as you possibly can. And then you gotta know the difference between drinking water and staying hydrated. You have to have some type of a movement exercise program. You have to do the type of foods that keep you regular because if you're if you're eating, but you're not having a bowel movement, but once a week or once every two or three days, that's a lot of toxins left in your body. The more toxins are in your, the less your immune system has its strength. And so those would be things. If anybody needs any specific advice, reach out to me and let's uh, work because this is not a time for any of us to have the understanding that we should be doing something different and not doing something different could wind up being your demise. Mm. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And how can those who are watching contact you? Yes, sir. Uh, well, there's the um, email address right there on the screen. And then you can also follow me on Facebook at the T-H-E-E -E, Ultimate Wellness Group, the Ultimate Wellness Group on Facebook. On YouTube, I am the Ultimate Wellness Group. And um, on Instagram, I'm the Ultimate Wellness Group. And if you, you know, need to contact me specifically, you can reach out to 832 429 4576. Again, that's 832 429 4576. Brother, thank you for the opportunity to be on your show. As we continue to grow our relationship, I'm always honored uh, in a time like this. You know, even though it was last minute, man, I'm always honored to come and give our people some information because it's a tough time out, out here right now for um, all of us, but especially for those that are trying to get all of this information and put it in the right place and come to where they can make an honest, dedicated good decision based on facts rather than fear. So thank you, brother, for the platform. Absolutely. Thank you. And for those who would like to check out more of uh, his Facebook page, you can definitely check out the link in the description. As you say, Dr. Keeley's uh, Ultimate Wellness Group. But uh, once again, this has been uh, an honor. And once again, I appreciate the, the, your time and everything that you you've done for our people and will do. And for those who are watching, this is the STEM files where we highlight the best and brightest right. in science, tech, engineering, and mathematics. We're also the voice of STEM talent and black culture. Thursdays and Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern time, Jabrian Engineer, Jabril Muhammad, a.k.a. Jabrian Engineer, Tariq Muhammad, a.k.a. Tariq Cardiac. Follow us at our social media at, at, the, at the bottom, the STEM files on YouTube, the STEM files on Facebook, and at the STEM files on Instagram. Uh, doctor, is there anything that you'd like to leave the audience with before we go? Go back and listen to the show. <laughs> follow me. <laughs> continue to follow these brothers. Continue to to just you know put your attention to people that you know are going to lead you in the right direction. And all of you that are following, and all that may potentially listen to the show in the, in in the future, you are smart enough and brilliant enough to know when somebody's telling you the truth and when they're not. So use that. Pay attention to that inner voice and let's let's stay healthy. Excellent. Excellent.
All right. Thank you so much, Doc. For those who are tuning in, once again, this has been the STEM Files. Yes, sir. See you Saturday. Peace.